In this video I will compare Canon 40mm and 50mm STM lenses on a full frame camera. If you want to know how they perform on smaller APS-C format, I compare them in another video together with second Canon Pancake, the 24mm STM. You can find the link to that video in the description below. On full frame, 40 and 50mm lenses have field of view that is often described as so-called normal, what means they will render object proportions similar to what our eyes will see. Actually, with 57 degrees diagonal angle of view, 40mm is closer to 35mm lens than the 50mm one. Which will be your favorite, it's up to you. Personally, I like 40mm better as it is easier for me to think and frame in wide angle. 50mm feels too narrow, it is often I needed to take a step back to fill frame with what I wanted. 40mm is closer to how I view the scene, I like to catch more of the environment around my subject. If you are more into portraits, tend to separate your subject from the background or prefer shooting details, 50mm will probably be better. Not just because of larger aperture, but that extra 10mm is visible in real life use. It might not sound as much on paper, but it's there, trust me. Build quality is almost identical. Both lenses have metal lens mount and are made from plastic. 40mm maybe looks more expensive since 50mm has a bit cheap looking material, but you will soon forget about it. Both lenses are delivered without lens hood and are not weather sealed. 40mm is a tiny bit lighter and around 1cm shorter. Diameter is identical. Both lenses have focus by wire system, which means focusing is not mechanically linked, but uses motor instead. 50mm lens has a bit better focus ring placement, as it is not easy to rotate by mistake. 40mm focus ring is on the very edge of the lens. Both lenses have manual focus override, and for both of them front element will extend when focusing, but will not rotate. Important detail for polarizing filter users. On my 6D, 40mm focuses perfectly. In most cases I won't bother to check focus accuracy after taking the shot. 50mm can have problems though, especially at f1.8. There is no rule, it hits or misses on its own internal logic. For most of the shots it will be fine, but I have developed a habit of checking focus accuracy when using this lens. Center sharpness surprised me. 50mm appears to be sharper, what is the exact opposite from results I got on more demanding 24 megapixel ATD crop sensor. This is also contrary to my everyday experience with these lenses. I have 50mm for 2 years and 40mm for almost 4 years and always considered 40mm to be a bit sharper. To be sure I repeated the test with careful manual focus, and really there it is. 40mm does deliver a bit more resolution and also a bit better contrast. I have probably misfocused first time around. And just to be sure I did third series. Once again, 40mm appears slightly better. It is safe to say both lenses are very similar in terms of resolving power in center of the frame. Corner performance is not questionable, both of them are blurry wide open no matter how many times I repeated test. 40mm pancake is better though, it delivers slightly more resolution but has visibly better contrast. Both lenses are perfectly aligned. Canon usually doesn't have problems with quality control unlike some other brands. 40mm lens is better in this regard. I can notice a bit of a shift at 5.6, but that will be not an issue in real life. 50mm has visible shift from f4 to f8 and that could be an issue from time to time. Both lenses suffer from strong focus breathing which is not desirable for video recording. 
It could also be a potential problem for anyone doing focus stacking as object will slightly change its size. There's nothing to be done about it, so either accept it or buy some other lens. Lateral chromatic aberrations are not a problem on either one. They are almost non-existent. Longitudinal aberrations are more pronounced on 50mm lens but start to disappear at around 5.6. In this regard, 50mm lens is better on full frame sensor than on high resolution APS-C, in which case you need to close aperture to f11 to get rid of longitudinal chromatic aberrations. 40mm lens is solid in this matter and by 5.6 pretty much all aberrations are gone. Both lenses are very low in geometric distortions. Slight barrel is visible, but in most cases I don't even bother to correct them. Coma in full frame corners is not ideal on both lenses, but I prefer results from 40mm pancake. On the other side 50mm lets in more light and has lower vignetting, so it's hard to recommend any for astrophotography. Pancake design usually has problems with vignetting and 40mm is no exception. At f2.8 it is strong but cleans up nicely at f4. Those with sharp eyes will notice vignette will never disappear completely, even at f22. It is not strong, but it is there at every aperture. 50mm is much better. Wide open there is vignetting, but this is to be expected at f1.8. Already at f4 it is completely gone. When placed side by side it is obvious 50mm has one stop advantage. f2.8 on 40mm looks as bad as f1.8 on 50mm. Flare control is better on 40mm lens. In most cases there won't be any. With sun in the frame just a few ghosts can happen, but that's about it. Contrast is preserved. I never bothered to buy lens hood for this lens and I have it almost 4 years. 50mm shows more ghosting, but this is still not a big problem. There is no loss of contrast and overall this is a major improvement over previous 50mm generation. Both lenses render really nice out of focus highlights. They are very uniform with just an edge or some tiny artifact slightly visible. Overall this is fantastic for 125 and $180 lenses. Of course 50mm has better potential for this kind of shots because of its 1.8 aperture. Overall bokeh look is solid but not ideal. When you have enough space between your subject and background, nice blur will be produced. But if there is something with sharp edges like branches, bokeh can become quite harsh. I would say 50mm is better, but that is mostly because of its large aperture. It can also create distracting patterns in some cases. None of this is a macro lens, but a solid close-ups can be made. 50mm is slightly better in this regard. Both lenses produce very nice sunstar and it is hard for me to decide which is better. There's not much to be said in conclusion that I haven't mentioned already during this review. Both lenses are surprisingly good in optical department, especially when you take price and small size into equation. 50mm is better choice for shallow depth of field styled images and a bit more narrow field of view, while 40mm excels for travel, landscape and generally feels more like a good 35mm lens. Ultimately, as both are very affordable and if you already spent a solid amount on a full frame camera, I think a lot of you might just get both of them. Try them, decide which you like better and sell the other one. I kept them both as I found a use for each. That's all for this review. I hope I gave you usable informations. If you have a question, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel for updates and if you want to support my work, buy stuff on Amazon using my affiliate links below the video. You will not pay any more than otherwise, but I will get a small percentage. Thanks for watching.